Hello again. So in this video, what I'm going to do is talk about the concept of linearization. It's a concept that's used a lot on AP Physics, especially what they're going to do is you take a physical equation, make it look like the equation of a line, and then you're going to take the slope and find some sort of physical quantity from it, like acceleration due to gravity, um, position, time, something from that. Um, set up. So what I'm going to do is talk about linearization and then how linearization is used in the first lab of uh, the ramp lab. So linearization as such. Okay. So let's do a quick review about how you do any sort of graph. So here's a basic graph right here, and I'm going to use just arbitrary units at the moment. So let's say this is y, as you normally would, and this is x. So, you know, for instance, let's take this data makes a straight line like that. I'm just going to make that as such. So first of all, linearization, you can see part of the word is linear. So it is when you have an, uh, a line, specifically the slope, that is linear. So this is a linear slope. So a nonlinear slope, just to give you some examples, would be something like this. This is like an x squared graph. Or you can have something like this. This is a square root of x graph. Hopefully this is all review. You can have something like this. Depending on the shape, it could be x, 1 over x, 1 over x squared. Anyway, these have curves in them, so they're nonlinear. So we're talking about slopes that make linear or straight lines. So let me just erase that. There we go. Now, our old formula for the slope of a line is going to be a y equals mx plus b. This is for a linear relationship, where y is, as you can figure out, the y-coordinate of your system, and x is the x-coordinate. And as a review, m is your slope, and b is your y-intercept. Sorry for the handwriting. Y-intercept, I'll say that again. Okay, so say we have an experiment, okay? For example, our lab that's coming up. So I'm going to walk you through this, but eventually I'm going to have you do this process. So, so say you have the ramp lab, okay? And part of your lab is you're going to, I'm sorry, um, the ramp lab. Basically, you're going to find, the goal of it is to find the relationship between uh, velocity and position, okay? So you're going to do that by, and you'll see this in the ramp lab, is you'll have a ramp and you have this ball that's going to roll down the ramp and then we're going to record the velocity at a location. So uh, we're going to measure this distance right here, the displacement, and the velocity at that specific location. So that's our lab and we want to find the relationship of that so we're going to graph it. So spoilers, when you do, which I hope to find and what you will find, is that if we plot velocity on the y and we find um, x on the x, just happens to be coincidental that x is on the x, we'll find that our graph will not be straight. In fact, we'll see that we'll have something like this. Okay. Now, the problem with this is that our slope is changing, so this is a nonlinear relationship. Usually we want to manipulate our data so that we could get a straight line. And then from the straight line, we actually make equations. So that's where they come from. They come from physical quantities that we linearize and we make equations. So what we do is we play around with the variables. Uh, well, if we, for, you know, if we're doing studies, we would play around with the variables. But we're going to actually figure out what we need to do to make this linear by looking at some of our equations. So, if you take a look at our kinematic equations, 
uh, we want to find one that has this variable and this variable. So if you notice the context of the problem here, this is technically going to be a final velocity, right? Because we're going to always start our initial velocity of the ball up here as zero. So we need something with vi, vf, and x. Now, if we notice that we have a zero velocity here, and this will be non-zero, um, so not zero, so it's actually going to have some speed at this point, we can assume, which we will, that there is some acceleration involved in this. So we need to find an equation that will suit all these variables. And when you go through the kinematic equations, you'll find that Vf final equals Vi final plus 2A delta x will cover all the um, equation variables that we need for this. So if you notice when I wrote this down, um, that we have, or this is technically, I'll put a VF here because this is what we're going to be plotting, VF, and I'll put delta X here so to signify this. So this is our X axis right now, and this is our Y axis. But if you notice that the X is fine, but the Y is actually squared. So what this means is that in order for this to appear linear, we have to actually square the velocity. So what we're going to do with your data after you take that, you're going to make both plots so you can see this actually happen. We're going to take our final velocity and we're going to square it, so physically square it. Um, and then what we'll find is we're going to get our data looking like this instead, a linear line. Pretty neat. So, and then this is still delta x down here. So, another point is that notice that we said the initial velocity of this ball will be zero. So this whole term will go away. So what we have now is Vf final, after we simplify it, equals 2a delta x. And like I said, now this is going to be our y-axis, and this is going to be our x-axis. So if we make a comparison to y equals mx plus b, this would be our y. This will be our x, right? Which means m is going to be this. This is our y-axis. I'm sorry, this is our x-axis. This is our y-axis. Which means what's ever in front of the x-axis by the equation of the line is our now our slope. So what our slope represents, according to our linearization, this process I'm doing is called linearization, is 2a. So part of your lab is actually to determine the acceleration of the ball by finding the slope. So step by step, what we're going to do is, I'll move this up just as a review, you're going to be taking data by moving, this is called a photogate, so it's actually going to measure your velocity. So as we move this down, we're going to get different positions and velocities. When we plot it up first, we'll find that we'll get a uh, nonlinear relationship. But if we take that data and we square it, it's going to become linear. And after we square that data, um, we're going to find the slope. So as a quick example, um, let's say that this is your data. I'm making this up. Your data can reflect something completely different, okay? So say we get this line, okay? And we're going to use Excel to do this. So Excel will put out the equation in the line, which might look something like this. Like that. So when you do it on Excel, it's not going to have any sort of units with it, so we have to just be careful. What we are interested in is, is a slope. So that's this number right here. That's m. So part of your lab is to find acceleration using the slope. So when we do that, this is how you'll do it. m is going to equal to 2a, right, where m is the slope. So let's pretend that this was my value. This won't be. It's actually going to be much smaller. 
So m is going to be 4.18 equals, so I'm taking the slope, 2 times a. Now, um, like I said, Excel won't put in the units, but to figure out the units, you have to know about what you're solving for. So in this case, it's the slope. You could also do it dimensionally. What we have here is meters squared over seconds squared, because that is the velocity squared. And then we're going to be dividing it by 1 over m. And as you see, that's going to get rid of one of the m's, and you're going to get this relationship like that. So that's where the units come from. Or you can say, okay, it's an acceleration. Those are our units, meters per second squared. So I didn't solve for a yet. I just found the slope and plugged it in. To solve for a, I had to divide both sides by 2, right? So that's going to be 2.09 meters per second squared is equal to a, just like that. So you're going to find the acceleration of the ball on the ramp by linearizing your graph. And you're going to do that by finding the velocity squared and position, and you're going to plot that um, together on Excel. The last part of your lab, what you're going to do is you're going to find the acceleration due to gravity. So you're going to do that by first calculating the theoretical value. Uh, theoretical is spelled completely wrong but that's okay, just go with it. So this is what the equation should be. So the acceleration due to gravity is going to be a is equal to sine of the angle times g. So we're going to solve for g. I'm sorry, we're going to, sorry, step back. You're going to find the theoretical value of a, my fault. So you're going to get this by measuring the angle of your, your ramp right here. That's what this theta means. And you're going to plug that in here. And g is the acceleration due to gravity. And that is 9.81. So you're going to use that number. So your angle should be pretty small, probably like 4 or 5 degrees. So whatever that number is. We'll plug in here times 9.81 and get that. Once you get your theoretical value, you're going to find your percent error. Um, usually they're pretty high because we don't actually consider any sort of rolling. So the ball rolls and there's energy lost in that. So the acceleration has to go, um, we'll go, well, we'll get slower because of that. Friction, uh, a couple other factors. So it's not going to be perfect. Um, but we're going to take you know, uh, a percent error of that. So. Uh, we'll take our accepted value um, minus the theoretical value divided by the theoretical value. Um, and then we'll see how good that comes out when you do that. So that is the process of linearization. Uh, what you notice is I attached on the, um, on the homework is this worksheet. So here are other cases where you might see linearization. Um, of course, you don't have the equations yet or the equation spaces to solve this, but I wanted to at least show you what the AP might say because this is literally out of the AP. So here's another experiment where you're using friction. So they tell you to do that. So this is what it looks like, exactly the process. Use a graph to determine this. Um, find out what to do, etc. Now one more major thing I want to point out before I end uh, this video is anytime you do a plot, here we go. So on the AP, you're not going to use Excel to do any of these graphs. So um, you're going to physically do this. So sometimes you will actually have to graph. And they might say, what do you need to do to this graph to get the linear relationship? They won't tell you. You have to say, oh, I have velocity data. I have to square it. So they assume that you know how to do this. Now. When you actually plot your data, it's not going to be a straight line, right? Usually it's something more like this. You're going to have to take a best fit line, okay? Best fit. So that's where you're going to take the slope. Always on the AP, take it from the best fit and not from your data.
and that will be it for this video.